Hey everyone and welcome to a new XIM tutorial. Today I want to show you a new config tutorial. But since I don't have a lot of free time right now, I will once again have to use an artificial voice. So definitely let me know how you like the voice or if I should do some adjustments to it. Alright guys, so in the following video, I will show you two different configuration approaches. The first one is for the people who want the best mouse movements and aim assist experience, and the second one is for those who don't want to go the extra mile and just want really good settings that can be set up in a few minutes. The performance difference between the two configurations is maybe 5-10%, to 10 so you have to ask yourself if the additional steps for the better configuration are worth it to you, or not. Outside of that, I will show you how to set up sub-configurations for the health and shield menu, the explosives menu, and a sub-configuration that will allow you to better control the weapon recoil. So first let's look at the required steps to get the best Apex Legends configuration. If you are not interested in this, then you can directly jump to the second chapter. What you will now have to do is to downgrade your Apex Legends Smart Translator to the second version. The second version provides better mouse movements and aim assist than the new one. For that, you first have to download the PC Manager from July 2019, you can find a download link in the video description. Don't use any other manager, it will only work with the one from 2019. Also you can only downgrade the smart translator through a PC. You can probably also do it with root access on an Android phone, but I haven't tried that yet, so I will only show the PC manager solution. Once you downloaded the PC manager, you will have to download the Zim configuration file that I have also linked in the video description. It contains the downgraded smart translator configuration. By the way, the new beta managers are using the updated database which is no longer compatible with the Zim configuration file that contains the old smart translator. That's why you have to use the PC manager from 2019. Another thing I would like to mention is that these steps will not affect your other Zim configurations or your current phone manager settings. The only thing this will do is to load an old Apex Legends configuration onto your Zim. Nothing else will be affected or changed. So once you have downloaded both, you can install the PC Zim Manager. If you want to, you can also already start the manager, but don't connect your Zim to the PC yet. Next you have to open your file browser, and open the local hard drive directory. You can find it on the left side in the navigation bar. At the top you now have to activate hidden folders. For that click on view in the top right corner and then tick the box next to hidden items. Once that is done, you can see the program data folder. Click on it and scroll all the way down to the Zim Technologies folder. In there you will find a Zim 5 folder. In that folder you have to paste the Zim configuration file you just downloaded. If you already opened your PC manager previously, then there should already be a Zim configuration file in it. In that case delete it and replace it with the file from the video description. Once that is done, you can close your file browser. Also, if you already started the PC manager then please restart it now. Once the manager is running again, proceed to the point where it wants to connect to the Zim. Plug your Zim into the PC USB port now. Around 1 or 2 seconds after you connected it to the PC, you will have to press the P button on the Zim to turn it into manager mode. Without that, your manager cannot connect to your Zim. If you correctly pressed it, your manager will be able to connect to your Zim. If it didn't work, just unplug your Zim from the PC and retry. This time make sure to press the P button at the right time. Once you have a working connection, do not press the download icon in the top right corner. If you do that, then you cannot downgrade the smart translator, and you have to start from the beginning of the video again. Next click on new configuration in the top right corner, and search for Apex Legends. After that, pick your preferred console configuration, and confirm your choice. By the way, this configuration will work equally well for all supported Zim consoles. Once the configuration has been loaded, you can click into the configuration picture. At the top it will show a very long text, and at its end it should show the number 2 with a point ahead of it. That way you know that you now have the version 2 translator for Apex Legends. The text before the version number is console specific, so if you are on Xbox, then it will show something else there. If you didn't do the downgrade then you will use the latest version of the Apex Legends Smart Translator, which is 3. That one also works quite well, but it's not as good as version 2 in my opinion. Now once that is done, you can close the PC manager, and disconnect your Zim from the PC. All the upcoming steps can now be done via the phone manager again. 
In the second topic, I will show you how to set up the HIP and ADS configuration for Apex Legends. The setup is identical for both, the downgraded configuration, as well as the current one. I will demonstrate all steps with the downgraded version, but again, the setup is the very same with the latest Apex Legends game profile. First, let's take care of the Zim Apex polling rate. Go into the global settings in the top right corner. If you cannot see the polling rate option then tick the expert mode box in the middle. We will use the trick that I recently showed in my secret aim assist video, so set your polling rate to 250 Hz. This will later result in an excellent aim assist with very responsive mouse movements. By the way, as long as your mouse also runs on 250 Hz, or a faster profile, you don't have to change your mouse polling rate. After that, press the save button in the bottom right and restart your Zim Apex. A restart is necessary, or else your polling rate changes will not become active, so just unplug your Zim from your console and plug it back in again. The required in-game settings for Apex Legends can be found by pressing the wrench button in the bottom right of your configuration picture. This will now be the only setup difference between the two configuration versions. If you downgraded your Apex Legends configuration as shown in the first chapter, then you have to use the in-game settings that I will show you now. As you can see, the old configuration profile does not use the advanced in-game settings. Also, don't attempt to use the downgraded configuration with the advanced in-game settings, it will not result in very good mouse movements. So go into your in-game options, and then head into the advanced settings. At the bottom you can press the restore default option, this will reset all your current advanced settings to default. After that, deactivate the advanced settings at the very top. Also set your controller sensitivity to 7, or else you will not have any aim assist. The field of view is personal preference and will not have any influence on this configuration tutorial. If you did not downgrade, and you want use the current Apex Legends configuration, then press the yes button in the pop-up window and you will be forwarded to the Zim website. For the new configuration version you have to use the advanced in-game settings. The notches are referring to individual clicks in the sliders of the advanced settings. So whichever configuration version you prefer to use, please make sure to use the correct in-game settings for it. Next, let's take care of the HIP and ADS settings. Start by clicking on the edit button in the top left. For the configuration color I have decided to use blue, and my hotkey is the F1 key. That way I can load my Apex Legends configuration whenever I want to, by pressing the F1 key on my keyboard. As a confirmation, my Zim will then show a blue LED light. Now let's swipe one more time to the right to enter the HIP menu. As always adjust your synchronization settings first. Because we want to use the trick from the Secret Aim Assist video, you have to pick Sync off here. Don't worry about your mouse movements, they will not have any stutter as you normally would have when using 1000Hz. After that, adjust your HIP sensitivity. I will use a sensitivity of 38, with a mouse DPI value of 3200. Your DPI value has quite an influence on the quality of your mouse movements. A wrong value can cause aim assist problems, mouse stutter, and delayed mouse movements. If you are not sure what DPI value will work best for your setup, then you can watch my 1 minute long YouTube short on the best mouse DPI for Zim Apex and Zim 4. Also, if you don't know what sensitivity value will work best for you, then you can watch my ultimate mouse sensitivity tutorial. It will show you step by step on how to find the sensitivity that will provide you with the highest accuracy. Most people play with sensitivities that they cannot handle very well, and as a result, their aim or accuracy is not as good as it could be. So definitely give it a try, if you want to improve your mouse aim. For this configuration we will not use any boost, so keep its value at zero. Only use boost if you want to reduce the aim assist. In that case, use a value of around 80. But again, this should not be necessary. Steady aim will also not be required. The secret aim assist setup will provide a really smooth transition through the aim assist bubble. If you still want to use steady aim, then I recommend a value of around 2. The same goes for the SAB feature, which you have to configure next. Use a value of up to 30 here. Since Apex Legends heavily focuses on mobility and precise character movements, you shouldn't set the value too high. For ADS, it's a different story, but more about that in a minute. I will use a value of 20, to still be able to do precise parkour tricks, and advanced wall jumps. Now scroll down until you can see the button bindings. Here you can either copy my button layout that you can see right now, or you go with your own one. 
At the very bottom of your button bindings, you can find the option to switch to the secondary button bindings. Here you can bind every controller action a second time. I'm using it to bind my ultimate ability to the scroll down action. You can also do that if you want to. Now scroll all the way up again and click on the ballistic curve generator. To further improve the aim assist, we will use the following curve. Usually faster mouse movements will break the aim assist, which is something that this curve will prevent to a certain extent. The curve will basically allow you to flick very fast over a target and the aim assist will still slow you down a little bit at the most optimal moment. The curve is optimized to not influence your mouse movements in any noticeable way, so you will still be able to build up muscle memory. You can find the copy and paste code for the curve in the video description. Alternatively, just follow the three steps that I did to manually create the curve. If you want to use the code, then copy the whole code and press the paste button in the ballistic curve generator. If you are not sure how to do that, then you can watch my copy and paste code tutorial video on how to use such a code. But you don't have to use the curve, the configuration perfectly works without a curve too. It just further boosts the aim assist for faster mouse movements, which may not be desirable for every player. Now swipe one more time to the right to enter the ADS configuration. Just like before, adjust your Zim synchronization first. Once again go with synchronization off, so you benefit from the secret aim assist settings. After that adjust your aim down sight sensitivity. My preferred aim down sight sensitivity for Apex Legends is 45. Just like in the hip configuration I don't recommend to use boost for the aim down sights mode. The same goes for steady aim. If you still want to use steady aim then I recommend to use a value of 1.5. Now click on the ballistic curve generator and paste the curve from the hip configuration there. Alternatively you can manually create it, which is what I will do. And just like before, you don't need to use the curve, but if you want to have a better aim assist then give it a try. You can always remove the curve by pressing the clear button. I will use the curve, but the configuration works exceptionally well without a curve too. Now close the curve generator and untick the inherit box at the very top. If you scroll down, you can find the SAB feature again. Here I recommend to use a slightly higher value than in the hip configuration. So use a value of 30 to 50. Theoretically you can go as high as 200, but in my opinion the character movements start to feel off and weird once you cross the 100 mark. But a value of around 30 offers a great balance between precise character movements and a good aim assist behavior. The button bindings at the bottom can stay as they are, they will be identical to your hip bindings. In the third topic I want to show you a sub-configuration for the health and shield menu. We will use a new sub-configuration for that, so swipe one more time to the right. Start by pressing the enable button to activate this configuration. I will now rename the configuration to healing, you can do that too if you want to. For the activation button use the same one that you normally use when you want to heal yourself in the game. I'm using the left shift key for that. In the advanced settings set the delay value to 350 milliseconds. Once that is done, you have to bind your jump button as a deactivation key. I have bound the jump action to the spacebar. The zim sensitivity has to be set to 105. As for the synchronization feature, you can keep it on default, so don't change it. Now open the advanced settings right below the sensitivity option and set the boost value to 3000. Next you have to assign your healing button as an activation button for the turn assist feature. So here is how this sub configuration works now. When you are in the game and you want to switch your healing item, just hold down the activation button. You can now easily choose the item you want to use by moving your mouse into the corresponding direction. And when you want to start the healing process, you just shortly click the healing activation button. The 350 millisecond delay will make sure your aim will not go crazy then. The fourth topic is about the explosives menu. So get back to your Zim manager and swipe one more time to the right. Again start by pressing the enable button to activate this sub configuration. I will now rename the configuration to explosive. You can also do that if you want to. The setup process is the very same as before but this time you will bind everything to your explosives button instead. So for the activation button, use the same button that you normally use to throw an arc star, or a different explosive in the game. For me that is the mouse back button. And in the advanced settings set the delay value to 350 milliseconds again. 
Next bind your jump button as a deactivation key at the bottom of the delay feature. I bound jump to the spacebar. After that, set your sensitivity to 105 again. Once that is done, you can take care of the boost feature. Just like before, set the boost value to 3000. Next you have to assign your explosives button to the turn assist feature. The concept of this configuration is the same one as from the healing and shield setup. When you are in the game, and you want to switch your current explosive to a different one, just hold down the activation button of this sub configuration. By moving your mouse, you can now easily choose the explosive type you want to use. And when you want to engage the throwing animation, just quickly click your explosive button. You can of course, create a third sub configuration in the same fashion for the ping menu. But I will not do that now since I rarely use it. In the last topic I want to show you an anti-recoil configuration for Apex Legends. It will reduce the distance you need to drag down your mouse, to compensate the weapon recoil. For that swipe one more time to the right, and activate a new sub configuration. I will rename the configuration to recoil. Again you can do that too, but it's not necessary. The activation key for this sub configuration will be my mouse forward button. It has to be a button that you haven't assigned to any other action yet. Also, with this button, you have to shoot in the aim down sights mode when you want to reduce the weapon recoil. So you have the option to shoot with your regular fire button, or the anti-recoil button for when you want to reduce the weapon recoil. Now, untick the inherit box at the top, and scroll down to the button bindings. There you have to bind your anti-recoil button to the fire action. After that, you have to increase the XY ratio. For Apex Legends, a ratio of 1.5 works really well in my opinion. For a stronger effect, you can also use 1.8, or a higher value. At the bottom, you now have to set the translator mode to aim down sights. At last you have to copy your aim down sight settings into this sub configuration. My aim down sight sensitivity was 45. And the synchronization setting was set to off. After that, set the SAB value to the one you picked in your hip configuration. I used a value of 30 there. If you decided to use steady aim, then don't forget to adjust that too. At last open the ballistic curve generator again, and paste the curve from before into it. Alternatively, just manually create the curve again, like I do. Here is a clip on how the configuration works with the R99. First let me shoot one magazine without any recoil compensation. That way you can see the difference. Keep in mind that I don't use any weapon attachments that lower the weapon recoil. Now when I want to reduce the weapon recoil, I just shoot with my new anti-recoil button instead. To fully control the recoil I only have to move down my mouse a little bit. For weapons with a low recoil, or for the hip fire, I just use my regular left mouse click. Your Apex Legends configuration is now complete. You can press the save button in the top left and exit the configuration mode. As always, you can find the copy and paste code for the whole configuration in the video description. Guys, if you like this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And for the crazy guys out there, you can even support the channel now by becoming a channel member. I'd really, really appreciate that. Channel members also get exclusive benefits such as early access to all new videos. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorial videos and don't forget to post your own suggestions in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.